Shortcuts with Fruit from Your Kitchen. Hi everybody and welcome to Fun to Know with Carol. My name's Carol and I'm here every Tuesday to help you connect with your curiosity. Today what we're going to do is, well, we're actually going to make a change of plans because today's video was supposed to be all about cruising, but uh, it's the first week of January and there have been some hiccups in the cruising industry. So I've decided to do something completely different. We're on to plan B and plan B is to go over some shortcuts that I use with fruit in my kitchen. Now, most of these are winter fruits. They're, it's not like watermelon tips or anything like that that you can't get in the middle of winter. But things that you can get like citrus and pomegranates and bananas. And these are tips that you may already know, but if you don't, they might be helpful for you. So let's start with lemons. All right, so if you use lemons a lot, if you use the lemon zest a lot, you probably have a microplane because microplanes are one of the best things for doing zest. Now, when you're zesting a lemon or an orange, very often what I see is the chef will zest like this. They'll just, you know, roll their uh, citrus fruit along and zest like this. That never made any sense to me because I thought, if you're zesting like this, how are you seeing how much you, you're coming out with? So instead, turn it over like this and zest like this with the zest coming into the microplane. So right now I can tell that I have about half a teaspoon of zest, okay, when I'm when I've got enough that I can use, I just dump it into my container. If I need a tablespoon, I know I'm going to have to go quite a bit longer and it'll probably be my whole lemon. But that is coming close on a tablespoon of zest. So that's my tip for lemons. Just do the zesting upside down and it makes it a lot easier to measure. If this is a tip you hadn't thought of, you might consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Our next tip is with a winter fruit, pomegranates. Now, some of you may not be really comfortable in getting the seeds out of pomegranates. But if you've ever shopped for the seeds in the grocery store, they're quite expensive. And it isn't that difficult to take the seeds out. There are a couple of ways. I'll show you the way that I've always used in the past. And then the way that I currently use that is so much cleaner and easier to do. The first way is to simply cut the pomegranate in half and be aware it's going to stain whatever, <laughs> whatever cutting board you're using unless you immediately rinse it. So be aware of that. So I'm going to take one half and I'll demonstrate the other technique with the second half. With this first technique, you just need a bowl of water and you submerge it in the bowl of water. And we'll come over here so you can see, you're basically just pulling it apart and bringing out the seeds and they will sink to the bottom. And usually the membranes will float to the top. Now the difficult part of this is not putting it in water and getting the seeds out. The difficult part is bringing all the membrane out when you're finished. But it's a perfectly good way to do it especially if you want to keep your hands really clean. Okay, so this is, this is one good way, but as you'll see in the water, there's a lot of membrane that's still floating around. Okay, so let me show you tip number two. All right, for the second technique, you're also going to be slicing it in half, but that's all, not quarters, just a half, with the stem end and the flower end on both of the edges. Now for this, you'll also need something heavy, like 
Uh, I wouldn't say a hammer, but something about that weight. What I use is this ladle <laughs> because it's heavy. And the difficulty with a hammer is that it may break the skin. And what you're going to do for this technique is you're going to put it in your hand and then you're going to whack it with something heavy, something heavy and wide like this ladle. So here goes. The seeds are going to just fall into your hand as you can see here. And it takes a little bit, but you're just going to whack it all the way around until finally by the end, the skin is actually quite a pulpy mess, okay? It's not a mess as in dirty, it's just been totally obliterated. Um, the seeds are falling into your hand and the nice thing about this is that you're not getting membrane along with the seeds. You're just getting seeds. Now this is a pretty big pomegranate that I have so I should get my husband to be doing this because he's got bigger hands than I do. <laughs> my hands uh, don't really hold it quite as well but I just keep whacking it until I feel that the seeds have stopped falling. Okay, and look at how many there are. You can see what it's done to the inside and you can see how soft it is. What you can do now is just pull it apart and bring out the other seeds. Now this is a little bit messier on your hands than the water method, but I think it's better for not having as many membranes in your finished product. So that's tip number two and method number two for dealing with pomegranates. You would, in the store, pay five or six dollars for a package of pomegranates like this, and maybe you have someone in your neighborhood who has a pomegranate tree or that gives free pomegranates from uh, an overabundance of their harvest, and you can now feel confident in getting the seeds out of your pomegranate. All right, now the last, no, second to the last tip is going to be about bananas, one of our favorite foods. And again, you may already be doing this, but from what I've heard, there are all kinds of advantages to peeling your banana this way, especially if it is difficult to peel the quote unquote normal way. We do it like the monkeys do it. And I understand that they do it from the other end. You can simply put your finger in that end and it peels down nicely. Now the advantage is that you've now got something to hold it with, um, the stem end, which makes it a little more convenient. And done the right way, there are fewer strings that you have to deal with. I don't know if that's uh, worthwhile for you, but that's an alternative way to peel a banana. And last but not least, we have a little tip on kiwis. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any ripe kiwis because our grocery store just didn't have them. But I think this tip sounds really good and I'm going to try it when kiwis are a bit riper. Normally, if I want to slice a kiwi into nice slices, I would take it and peel, 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 peel with a knife. How I've seen recommended is you take your knife and you cut off this end, turn it around, cut off this end. Okay, so now you have two open ends. Then you take a large spoon, you slide it up inside and just scoop it out from the inside, which will leave you with a peeled kiwi, whole. So then you take your knife and you slice it this way and you end up with nice circles of kiwi. Try it the next time you have kiwis that are ripe. So I hope you're getting your five servings a day and that these tips will help you have a little bit more fun.